Hey there, sweet friends. This is Gina. Welcome to the Rebookery channel and welcome back to Finding Your Style 2. Today we are going to go back to episode number six, the one where it says now play. When I left you guys last time, I told you to take your fear paper that you had turned into a background of whatever and I wanted you to just play. Have fun and turn it into the art that you typically make. And I didn't give you any visuals to follow. I just kind of gave you some instructions. So today we're going to revisit that. We're going to go back and we're going to do part two. Now this is where we're going to do some thinking. So if you haven't done part one, this is not going to be as beneficial for you. And it's not going to make um, as much sense. And you, you probably won't get that aha moment that you will um, if you do go ahead and do this part one and then come in with your finished piece and let's go ahead and do part two. So I'm going to show you my play. I sped it up. I think what I'll do is just play some music and then as soon as that is done, I will come back and we're going to do this part right here. Analyze. This is where the rubber hits the road. We're going to analyze what you created.
right, so here is my finished piece and you saw the process that I went through. I will tell you, I, I took a long time on this. This took every bit of two hours to do. Um, and I would call this a finished piece. Now you may have a finished piece. Um, maybe you don't have a finished piece. Maybe you just have a whole bunch of different um, marks and text and art that you have done on a sheet of paper, um, your fear paper, Maybe yours tells a story. Maybe yours has quotes or song lyrics. Maybe yours is totally random. Maybe yours is 100% cohesive. And I, I don't know what you did. And I don't want anybody to think that theirs is wrong. Just because yours does not look like mine, that was the whole point. I don't want yours to look like mine because remember this is finding your style. So this is my style and you are on a journey to try to find your style. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this, whatever you have, whether it looks like a finished piece, whether it's not, it does not matter. We're going to take your art and we are going to go back and we're going to analyze it. So I'm going to have you gather two things for this part. I'm going to have you go back and get your um, timeline that we made in episode two. And I'm going to have you get your take stock paper, the one where we made the table with the always, sometimes, and never. Here's my timeline. And then here is my always, sometimes, never. And I um, actually made two of these guys. I made one um, with you guys on film. And then I made one that was just separate when I was trying to um, figure out how I wanted this to look. So I'll probably go back and forth between them. So I have these two things. And what we're going to use is we're going to go back and we're going to compare what we had written on this to our piece of authentic artwork. And I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to grab a, a separate sheet of paper because I'm going to do some writing on it. This is just one of my pieces from my scrap pile that we had gathered in episode one. So there are two things I'm going to look at when I go through and analyze. I'm going to look at what was it that I did. So I'm going to refer to my always, sometimes, never. What technique or what material did I use? And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to um, marry it with this. Okay, why did I do it? And what did, how did it make me feel? What was the feeling that I got from it? Okay, so I'm going to just take a look and see when I first look at this, what are things that I notice? Okay, first of all, I noticed that there is book text. Okay, I noticed that it is messy. I know that there is paint. Um, there's collage. There's a photo, even though you can't see the photo. There is doodling. So I've got some doodling and I've got um, dots and stuff that I did with paint pens. Sharpie, because I know I used a Sharpie. Um, layers, lots of layers on this. Because remember, this was my fear paper. Um, there is a lot of like my own handwriting and text that actually is in the background. So we're gonna put handwriting slash text. And then there's a lot of hand cut pieces. So I hand cut these flowers. I hand cut this little swoopy thing up here. Uh, book pages. And so this was like flowers. And then this was a children's book. Oh, I also had a cookbook up there too. Oh, I did um, stencil. 
which I'll be honest, I love, but I'm very lazy, and so I don't always like to get all that stuff out. But for this, I did. I grabbed stencils. And then I also have like some graph paper, and oh, it was torn. So I have a lot of torn paper. And then I wrote this phrase down here. And I had no idea, and, and please believe me when I say this, I'm being very real with you. I had no idea that this was gonna turn out like this. I had never had this image in my mind. And as I was creating it, it just evolved. There was, I would say, 90% of me creating this, I had no direction at all. Um, and then there towards the end, that's when it kind of all came together. So I just like kept going and going until I finally was like, oh, here's where this is going. This that I wrote right here, I had absolutely no idea that I was gonna write this until the very end and I had these flowers. I was sitting outside and I was looking at my garden and my husband was doing some yard work and it just came to me. It was like, well, you know, if, if you're gonna have a garden, you're gonna have to be willing to water it. Now, I don't know if that is a quote that someone else has said and if it is, I am not plagiarizing by any stretch of the means. I, I honestly have never heard anybody say that, that I know of, um, I just, literally was sitting out there thinking, oh, he's out here doing yard work, and yeah, we kind of have to do that because we've planted trees, planted a garden, blah, blah, blah. And so that's what I, I wrote here. As I wrote it, I was thinking, you know, this could actually apply to so many things. I mean, it applies to this. If you want to be an artist, you're going to have to be willing to practice, to play. Um, if you want to drive a car, you're going to have to be willing to put gas in it. Um, you know, it, it could just, yeah, like this statement, again, I have no idea if somebody else has used, if this is an actual real quote, but it works and I loved it. And I was like, okay, that's perfect. It goes right here and boom, I'm done. Now, I'm not saying this was easy. This was hard and it took a lot out of me and literally I was exhausted when I got done with this um, a lot of times when I do create stuff like this or I do do um, an entire spread or something in my journal I will walk away and I, I am totally exhausted it's a good kind of exhausted but uh, but I am because it does it takes a lot out of you so where I'm going with this sorry I totally got off uh, track here but I am being very real and very authentic with you this is the first time I have actually um, taken this and put it with these two things. It's the first time I've analyzed this. I have no idea. I'm, I'm doing this right now for the first time on camera because I want you guys to see um, this, this process. And so this is, this is very real. This is very authentic. Um, okay, so I think, I'm, I think I'm good. I think I got most of my stuff that I did here. I, I think I have a place to start. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look at, compare this with my list, okay? So I think what I'll do is I'll put an A if it's something that I said I always do, an S if it's something I said I sometimes do, and an N if it's something I said I never do. So book text, I know that was always. Um, children's books, absolutely. I didn't put cookbooks on here, but I know I do use cookbooks a lot. And so when I do this, I'm gonna go over here to this, and I'm gonna be like, okay, why did I do that? Why did I do that, and what feeling do I get? And maybe this is one answer for these. Well, here's the thing. Boop, let me write in a different color. So why do I use book text? I use book text because it takes me back to my childhood. Um, it takes me back to a simpler time. Why do I use cookbooks? Because again, it takes me back, but, but this reminds me of my grandma's. And so when I use these things, the feeling that I get is I get, um, 
I get nostalgia. And I don't know if I got that spelled correct. I get sentimental. It helps me to connect to my family, to my past, to my grandma. Okay, so now let's go messy. Messy is something that I always do. And so I'm gonna put an A. So why do I do messy? I do messy because that's me. I've tried to be neat and that's that's just not me. It's not it's it's not my personality. Um, this is a this is an accurate portrayal of me. Now I'm not like pig pen, you know, on the peanuts. I don't walk around and I have dirt and blankets and dust and f birds flying out from me. Um, but there are there my life is messy. I am messy. Um, it's it works for me. So messy makes me feel comfortable. Um, messy makes me feel, and my husband's going to walk by here with the uh, lawnmower, so we might hear that. Messy makes me feel like, like I can do it. I look at something that is messy and not perfectly lined up, and I, I say to myself, I can do that. I can accomplish that. I look at something that's very neat and lined up. I, and I, I'm immediately intimidated. So case in point, um, elementary teacher for nine years, bulletin boards are a big thing for elementary teachers. I hated bulletin boards. I hated bulletin boards because I couldn't do the nice, pretty, lined up, everything matched, everything was measured out perfectly, bulletin boards. So what I did was I did the complete opposite. I would do messy bulletin boards and I would make them deliberately messy so it looked like it was supposed to be that way. And and it became my style. And people, other teachers, students would know which bulletin boards were mine just because they knew that that was my style. So I'm okay, I have embraced it and, and I, I feel confident that I can do messy. And by the way, like just everything about me is messy. Now my clothing, not messy, but like my hair, <laughs> my hair is, I have this weird kind of hair and I can go to bed at night um, and wake up in the morning and it is these beachy curls that <laughs> a lot of people I guess like um, and I don't I don't have to brush I don't have to do anything to it and I can just wake up and it is like these cool little curls and it's just a hot mess. Some people, it freaks them out. Like there are people that their hair is perfect and everything is in its place. My hair is disheveled and it's just, that's just the way it is. And I try to straighten it and I try to do, you know, pretty little ponytails and stuff. And it, do, it no, it doesn't work because I am messy. That That's just me. Okay, sorry about that, TMI. Okay, paint. So I think I put paint on here and I would have put paint, oh gosh, where did I put it? I put it in the sometimes. And I think I put collage in the sometimes and I use those. Why do I use those? Because it adds color and color, color makes me happy. That, that's how I feel. Color is my way of expressing myself. So it's expression and bright colors. Okay, photos. I always use photos. So I'm gonna put always there. Why do I use photos? Because it makes it personal. To me, it's not my art unless I have a photo on it. That That's my stamp that that's, that's Gina Johnson's work because that's a photo that Gina Johnson took and that's a photo of something important in her life. Sorry, lawnmower. So how does that make me feel? Um, it, it gives me ownership. And it makes me feel proud. Um doodling. Okay, so doodling goes along with messy. 
it is my way of drawing. That, that's why I do it, because it's my way of drawing. It's kind of mindless. So sorry about the lawnmower. If it wasn't the lawnmower, it would be the neighbor's dogs barking. Um, so I don't really have to think when I'm doing it. And again, it's like I can do it. I feel, I don't feel intimidated, especially when I keep my shapes and my doodling very, very simple. Paint pens, uh, that's gonna go up here with paint. Paint pens, I'm just gonna put it up there with that. Sharpies, why do I use them? Because they are easy, they are permanent, and they're cheap. Okay, how do they make me feel? Um, they, they make me feel legit. Like when I use them, I know it's not like Crayola watercolor marker. It makes me feel like a legit artist. And I think it's that permanent part. Layers, okay. I always use layers. Why do I use layers? It's the buildup of the story. It allows me to play. Um, and you know, I just kind of feel like as I add layers, it just um, creates depth. It makes me feel like I have a secret, almost like that. Because I know everything that went in to this final product. I, I feel like I'm the, the builder of this. And I feel like it almost gives me ownership too. It's like um, it's like a badge of courage. I've 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 or a badge of accomplishment because I've I've worked so hard to get to the top. So yeah, it's accomplishment. Okay, handwriting and text. Okay, I use this all the time. So my own handwriting and just writing my own phrases and text and stuff like that. Um, here's why. It's easy. But here's the other reason. It is personal. Again, this is, this is like the photo. When I use my own handwriting and my own words and my own text, it becomes my personal piece of art. Nobody else can do my handwriting. Nobody else can do my, my words, my photos. And so that becomes very personal and it's mine. It's uncopyable. I mean, really, if you think about it, photos are uncopyable and handwriting is uncopyable. You, you could try to copy it, but, it, but it's, not, um, it's not truly theirs. So, and, and I just, I love this. It just, that, that, to me, that is everything. Um, same thing with the photo. To me, that is everything. That, that's how I know these, this is mine. This is mine because of that photo, because of that handwriting, because of those words. Hand cut images, same thing. Again, I like messy, I like the um, random, I could go buy die cuts, I could do digitals, but so could everybody else. So to me, this is personal. I th also think it's easy and it's cheap. And my pen is running out. Um, it's also very, um, it's also very, like it's reusing, it's, it's repurposing things. Okay, and it's original. Because the chances of us cutting out the same image out of the same 1939 magazine would be, you know, slim and none, because that's the whole random part of this. Um, book pages with flowers. I, I love, I love nature. So I'm not going to say I always do that. I do use book pages, but I sometimes, and that's just because that's the science part of me. That's the nature part of me. Um, it makes me feel technical, I'll, I'll be honest. 
and I like that technical stuff in in my art. Um, I don't need it to be so lovey-dovey and, and all that and squishy and gushy and everything. I like the technical. I like um, diagrams. I like lines. I like um, dictionary um, pages. I like uh, definitions and captions and things like that. Stencils. I don't always use stencils, so I'm going to put um, sometimes to never and with the stencils it was just play it was just fun um i don't know i i don't use it very often how did it make me feel it i i felt happy but then i also had to clean it up so i'm gonna put a little kind of straight face there torn paper i use torn paper <laughs> all the time okay so why do I use torn, pa torn paper? It's easy. Um, it's original because we're not going to tear it the same way. It goes with my messy, and it it it's random. Sorry, my pen's running out. It's free, and I don't mean free as in paper, like or as in money. I mean free as in it's just freeing. It is tearing your paper is just there's just something free about it so um, it's it's fun it's whimsical and that makes me happy that I like doing that all right kiddos so you've seen me analyze you've heard my husband mowing the lawn um, again guys this was totally me being authentic here I, I, I this was 100% me being real um, and I, I love this I've, I'd never done this before I don't I didn't even know how this was gonna turn out um, I kind of came up with this last night at about 2 o'clock in the morning because I was trying to think how do I want to how do I want to do this play part how do I want to tie this all together I think this is pretty cool because I hear the here is my style right here this this is my style okay and this is why it's my style. This is how I can defend that this is my style. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your piece, okay? I want you to go through, look at your always, sometimes, never, and I want you to write down, you know, write down what you see and then go and put on here, do you always use it? Do you sometimes use it? Do you never use it? Just follow the process that I did. As you do it, I want you to go back to this. Why did I do it? And how does it make me feel? Now, if you can come up with your why, like I could come up with my why on every one of these. In fact, I ran out of room for my why. Then that is your style. You own that. That is yours. If you can't come up with why you used it or the only reason why you said you used it was because it's fun or play, that might not be part of your style. For example, stencils, not really part of my style. I used it because it was fun and I used it because I was playing. It doesn't mean I can't ever use stencils. I, I can, but it just means that that's not part of the core of my style. Things that I had a lot of stuff to say, here's why I use this, and it was true and authentic reasons as to why I use it, that's my style, okay? This is a, gr I'm, I'm not getting rid of this piece of paper. This is amazing. I love this. I love everything I came up with on here. And it really helped to define me as an artist and to define my style. All right, my friends. Um, I hope you got some inspiration. I hope you are healthy. I hope you are happy. And I hope you do something creative today. I will see you next time in episode seven. Bye.